Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new normal on this amazing episode. Um, as I did welcome my guest, we'll be joining. We'll be joining. Uh, Bishop will be joining us later. But let me welcome both my guests. Um, Bishop J. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, nice, nice to be here again, Tibos. And uh, I'm happy the room, the room is a bit smoky. Yeah. Uh, but I believe we're in the sanctuary today. Uh, you, know, you know the Old Testament? Right. Maybe let's just start right there. Yeah. That um, the, the the presence of uh, worship. Yes. Uh, the, the, oh, it, actually, let me say it proper, properly and theologically. Right. Had we used the sanctuary uh, model yes. of worship, we would have been teaching the government right now how to create venues where people are meeting. Mm. Because in the Bible, before you enter into the sanctuary, yes. you must take off your shoes and wash your feet. Okay. So that if there are any bacteria under your feet, okay. they don't enter a place of worship. And one of the uh, most prominent things is that you must wash your hands before you enter into the sanctuary. Wow. Then all the bacteria is actually out. This is Old Testament theology. Then guess what? When you enter into the sanctuary, yes, sir. there was an altar of burnt incense. In pep. That's what the Catholics do, though. Catholics do burn it. Mind you, I'm a caller these days, but when I get Kamal Gayes, yeah, we should love it. And as a gonna, more guy is hula, yeah, but bacteria does not respect the Kamal Gayes. There are physical things you must do if you don't wash your hands. It does not wash your hands, not wash your hands. hygienic things and basic, yes, basic environmental cleansing things, right? right. Must be put in place. So, for me, actually, when I discovered the, the, the broadness of the biblical text, okay, it almost broke down the barriers because on the same wavelength, when we begin to talk about indigenous medicines, yes, and indigenous herbs, and how actually God planted all these things for right. consumption, Christianity comes and says, We're healed in Jesus' name. That's that's the <laughs> that's that's what I want us to talk about because when Christianity was introduced, it diminished Africans. It diminished our uh, connection. We started gravitating towards the Western um, solution in dealing with African problems. And Dr. Majola, you are here today. You, you are called. This is not a career for you. It's a calling. Yes. And you're an engineer by prof by profession. You're a qualified engineer. And I'm trying to ask, when did you pivot from the world of engineering? to your calling and here tonight as Utogotel joining us in this conversation in this pandemic hoping to you know create solutions for this problematic society with all the years that I've been going up and down trying to find solutions for myself right. personally um, I have I have been a born again Christian. You've been a born again Christian. The so-called tongue speaking, you name it. Speaking in tongues. Yes. Casting the name in of Jesus. Hey, yo, shut up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and having to. Is that Bishop? Bishop is in the building, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just big prophecies. Yes. You name it. Yeah. You know, and I was in the choir when. Praise and worship and singing all that and right. believing in the so-called and I would say the concept of Christianity and Jesus. Right. And also having been in the background of being a Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. So that my path from tr that transition, I felt so empty. Right. And um, and I could feel that something was missing. Mm. But I knew at the back of my mind that. I do have this calling. I, I do. I do need to be in a different place. Yes. So with my career, studying and going to varsity and doing my civil engineering, and then in the long run, while I'm still in the corporate world, this happened. Whereby wow. I had to. I found myself in that state whereby now it was no more turning back, because for me it was an element of thinking that now I have to go. The sicknesses that happened over, over and over again led me to, to find myself in the space of being, um, in the a pesho. So, so, so you were on your path as an engineer. Yes. Um, on numerous occasions, you got sick, hmm. back to back. Yes. And this sickness necessarily led you to your calling. Yes. That's interesting. Mm, because Be there was no cure to or definition of what could be this sickness right you know that was 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 uh it kept on reoccurring in my body okay you know to a point where by the doctors were like you know what we 
actually don't know what is it. It could be this, could be that. They will give me about five to six cent reasons what could be the cause of the sickness. And so I then started, and then I went for training. The, right. They said we'll call it Pesho. Right. I did all the, the, the initiations processes. Okay. And um, it took about, about six to eight months or so. Mm. And, and from there, I still continued working okay. for many years. So I would say in total, I've worked for 17 years. 17 years working? Yes. Right. In a, as corporate. An, as an, in, in a corporate space? Yes. Corp I would say when I say corporate as an yeah. engineer, yeah. both in construction and consulting. But in the interim, was it because I graduated in 2013. Okay. So from 2013, while working at the same time, after work... Consulting. I consulting. That's interesting because, Bishop... When you are called, mm. um, and I think years ago, Bishop preached about it, says, uh, don't maim me, don't maim me, Jesus. Don't break my leg to get my attention. I've listened to most of my brothers and sisters who went the space of traditional um, uh, d d the doctrine of, you know, in, in, in traditional um, or in at the root of that uh, Dr. Majola went. Something horrific, something terrible. There were sequence of events happening that couldn't be resolved. And it seems to me that this calling comes to you through chastening. When some in the gospel calling just come through an awareness. You wake up and you go for an exercise or be it a school theological or you don't even just you just venture into being a pastor mm. and, and 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 at that point where dr majola realized she's called it was because of numerous painful experiences that mm. no preacher could find solution or, or help her to restore or, 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 or to really discover what's the cause of her problem how is it different that the the calling in the church doesn't present itself in a more excruciating way as the, the the path of spirituality is rather interesting to me yeah because if you are supposed to study throughout the biblical text you will not find out what happened to her is by no means different okay from what happens to all the called people into the space of the gospel mm -hmm. people are busy mm. uh, towers mm. people are busy and they are busy doing nothing they are busy with self-occupation okay and God has never been stranded when it comes to calling the attention of a person who pretends to be busy. Okay. So many of these guys who don't have time either for God or have time for spirituality. Yeah. All it takes is a nice good accident, a nice broken leg, <laughs> and their foot is hanging in the air, and they have all the time. Now, meetings have stopped. SMSs have stopped. Yeah. The phone is taken away from them. Yeah. And in that position of stand here still, that the mind begins to roll back and say, but what is happening to me? Mm. Why is this happening? That becomes the Damascus experience mm. where you need literally to have that encounter mm. with your spirituality. And I think in the midst of the lives we're living, in the bus, hustling and bustling, yes. people have forgotten to start listening to the divine voice. There okay. are so many noises around us from media Go to this. Lots of noise in your headphones. Okay. There's music in your okay. home. TVs are high. Yeah. People are always talking. And, and I wonder if people can still hear the voice of God above all this chaos. It takes an event yeah. in all the world. Right. It takes an event right. to, to put a, a, a smashing emergency breaks in your life. Even the fool on his way to hell. Yeah. When enough controversy happens to him, he prays. Let me maybe throw the question at Bishop Noel Jones and help me welcome Bishop Noel Jones in Los Angeles. Was there a special event, Bishop, that led you to your calling? How did you know that you are called um, as part of your journey, Bishop? Well, I, I discovered this, that in callings of God are, are quite idiosyncratic. It all depends on where the individual is at the particular time. In my case, my father, he would preach on Sunday mornings and he didn't really like preaching Sunday nights. And so he, one Sunday night, he just opened it up to everybody and he said, listen, as he sat in the comfortable chair on the pulpit, <laughs> he said, whoever has something to say tonight, right. uh, come forward and speak and uh, 
we just want to hear what you have to say. Well, I was at the community college. I was studying to be a pilot. I wanted to be a pilot. Wow. And uh, he said, well, come forward, whoever has something to say. So I felt an unction, an urge. And I went up and I began to speak and it was comfortable for me. Uh, now that I look back at it forensically, you could see that it was probably just the most minuscule sermon wow. or the minuscule talk that I could possibly have. But I felt comfortable in the space and I, I felt a warmth. I didn't see a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I didn't see uh, him high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Right. I just felt comfortable in the space and I said, Dad, I think maybe I, I would want uh, to be to preach like you do. And he said, well, if you're going to do that immediately, you have to get out of the community college and head straight for seminary uh, because we have enough jackleg preachers in the world. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but, but I say that to say, that it's idiosyncratic, the approach. Moses, uh, the idiosyncratic approach that God had with Moses. I think much of it depends on a couple of things too. How entrenched you are in whatever tradition you're a part of. Uh, how much you have planned mm. for your life. All right. How much you have planned for your life. Right. In many instances, the plan for your life can be so strong in your own thinking okay. that nothing can break in and this is where God has to come in and hit you hard because your plan for your life dominates your whole thinking and to break into your thinking. That's why the Damascus Road experience was so critical because Paul had a plan for his life and a plan for everybody else's life and so consequently he had to break in and upset the apple cart because he had to do something drastic. So yes, I agree that some people have to have their foot broken, some people have to have accidents, some people have to have cataclysmic extirpations, but other people can move within the calling of God without anything fantastic happening. Mm. And I'll conclude by saying this. We have discovered, or I have discovered over the years of preaching, that rejection in many instances is direction. All right. That God rejects you in what you would have. Uh, some women would never be called to the ministry if she had the man she wanted. And some men would never get called to the ministry if they didn't have the disappointment of being broken in some other vocation. Wow. I think my, my experience is similar to yours, Bishop. Maybe I, I know because of my, uh, my um, uh, you know, social space, people might think that... Uh, Maponga J was never called. My yeah. calling came in when I was in grade four, Bishop, uh, in, in wow. elementary school. So during the peak of war, all the schools in the villages were closed because the guerrillas were recruiting soldiers to go into the army. Okay. So we ended up living with my father in a small little four-roomed house where about 14 of us, the 14 young boys in three families mm -hmm. came to live together. Mm -hmm. Literally, it was like a sort of the language, an Indian house yeah. where we all packed up here. I want to throw a question both while we uh, parked on this thought of calling. And I need you to help me re reconcile a thought here. Romans 8 verse 1, Paul opens with, there is thou therefore no condemnation unto them who are born in Christ. Mm. Pack that. The being born is the awareness. Mm. And by whose definition is the right awareness? Because Dr. Majola had her own born again experience of which Christ was not the gateway. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But th th though she has a background okay. of having been within, on, on what you might want to call the gateway. Yeah. But the gateway does not give an e exit into, the, into what we consider to be the normal. Correct. It takes it to what Christianity now calls the abnormal. Correct. So, so maybe we need to understand again, and is, can we say if while you're sitting here that God is directing her life? That's what I want to understand. Because on many occasions, she has dealt with people coming to her with problems and people consulted you and they were delivered right and their deliverance whether it's through christ or is through 
the ancestors or through putting the right herbs together using your genius the fact of the matter is they got delivered they got direction they got cleared out they got cleared out in direction yes. where do you source your spirituality your what, who do you, what, how do you connect to the god who gives the strength and uses you to deliver those that come in your presence for seeking and consultation okay you will need to first un unpack what happens when you have to say you're connecting spiritually okay spiritually on spirituality correct understanding that there is the universe understanding yes. that there's different types of energies yes understanding there's that there's a broader picture so what happens is that most people when they define god mm. they define the, the the higher power the power that's been beyond other powers they may define it as god jehovah jesus whatever you call that's it that's correct they can relate to yes so that is the master and the creator of the universe that power mm. is the one that i link to because understanding that that is the power that created everything than anything that lives with us yes so for me then is to is being having that understanding that there is that power that is higher than the other powers and then now from that angle to understand that now as i am a living being yes uh, in the in the physical state okay there were people before me that lived in the same physical state yes so now when i talk of energies and transitions those physical people they then transcended to a spiritual state, which now makes them to, when I refer to them, mm. they are my ancestors. All right. They are the people that I would say they're in the spiritual realm. Okay. So when I then now connect or say now I'm connecting to the ones that are before me in the spiritual realm, who then connect easier and much better also with the ones that is the higher power, mm. higher than everybody else, and then themselves they connect to, to me and then it becomes like a chain. 100%. I'll make an example one because when you're looking at, um, there's, 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 there's a king that I really, really respect, Nkosu Pungani, Bayete Tata. Um, when he mentions and speaks, there he would uh, had a session over over the weekend. Okay, that he becomes like a, an ambassador to God. There's you no know, that relationship, you know, of of being there's a higher power, and then there's there's ancestors, and then there's there, there's him, yes. you know, in a way. So and having to understand that chain mm. of when I have to then say yeah, pasla. Yeah, there is a group of these people who were before me, and they all link up to one person. Who who gave birth mm. to everything. I want to ask you a question to Gogo. Uh, yes, please. Very, very, very important question. And I think I'm asking this on behalf of everybody else. Mm -hmm. You practicing as an indigenous healer and spiritualist mm -hmm. and understanding African spirituality at the level at which you do, is it correct to say Africans worship ancestors? Number one. Number two, what is the difference between worshiping ancestors or respecting them or consulting them as spirits now the word worship came with christian and christianity the word worship came with christianity we don't worship okay we acknowledge mm. we speak to them mm. we relate to them so ultimately who are you who are you talking to we are relating to the ones that are before us our guiding angels mm. that is Abandu be to that way before us. Okay. So I need to be to understand that we don't pray to ancestors. Right. We speak to them. Ah. Because that's a understanding that there is the transition of energies. Okay. Yes. And I like it when it, in the Bible they will say so inyama ilele and then moya is something like that. You know Correct. they will explain it like that. Ecclesiastes now, chapter. Yes. Now. Nine. Yeah. yeah. Now coming to that understanding, Oguti, you transcend. You tr there's a transition of energies, transition of the being. Now it becomes to be in a spiritual realm or spiritual world. Okay. Now when you then say, I have to now connect with this person, then when you say, see a partner, that's why sing at see a tandaza, see a partner. Is it the same way, Bishop? When um, I want to use examples in the Bible where. Um, I've, you know, someone will pray and acknowledge the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, exactly. as the de as 
the person praying being the descendant of Moses, being a descendant of, Ab of, of Abraham, will it be then appropriate if when I pray and I go and, and, and talk to God through the God of Robert Winston Jones, the God of Ndombiok Tula Molefe, um, um, will it be the same level of acknowledgement or am I seeking the same level of grace that was bestowed upon them to be extended on me? you got to deal with the issue of what is the contemporary thought as it relates to ancestral connections. Yes. You, you have to understand this, that unless you have any great knowledge of who and what your ancestors have achieved, you cannot operate in mm. that space and understand their relationship to the God that they served at that time. Mm. You, if you don't have an history, you see, when God introduced himself to Moses on the mount, he introduced himself as the God of Isaac, of course, of Abraham, Isaac, and Four Jacob. Brothers. Yes. But you have to remember that in an Egyptian environment, if his mother was not his nanny, he would have no knowledge of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. The significant piece is if you have no ancestral understanding, if you don't know who your ancestors are, you don't know what they have achieved, what they haven't achieved, Ooh. you don't know how they operated in the world, yes. then you can't have any understanding of a spiritual power behind them that made them what they were in order to make you who you are. Yay. This is why when he says I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he was, God was name dropping. He was oh. saying to Moses, look at Abraham how great he was. Look at Isaac how great he was. Look at Jacob how great he was. Now, if you want to know the spirit behind these guys, I am the spirit behind these guys. Hey. If you don't know anything about the successes or failures of your ancestors, then you cannot connect to oh. whatever made them who they are. Come on, and man. that becomes very critical. Can, now, can the I, can next I question is in, in terms of that? my sister giving great deliverance to people yes. and moving people from whatever platform, the question you have to ask now, oh. is there a situation in any human existence that restricts God when a person is seeking him genuinely. Yay. I don't care where in the world you are. Yes, sir. If you are genuine in your heart and you're seeking God, he will penetrate whatever tradition, whatever ritualistic, pious situation. He will get through ancestral. He'll get through any... Listen, God can touch you while you're high. <laughs> oh God, Bishop, say that one more time, please. Yeah, you could be drunk as Cooter Brown. If God wants to get to you, you he'll get penetrate to you. your Hallelujah. eyes, he'll penetrate cocaine, he'll penetrate uh, that gin, he'll <laughs> penetrate whatever it is. <laughs> dude, wait, dude, wait, no, wait. no, can I say something real quick? I, I'm loving what you're saying because I was studying, when I was in New York, I was given the opportunity to do an internship at J.P. Morgan. Mm. And I declined and I went to go and do Def Jam, right? Mm. Two different worlds apart. Mm. But there was something interesting while I, when I was applying at J.P. Morgan for internship. They asked me, do I know who Spencer Morgan? Spencer Morgan is the father of J.P. Morgan. Hmm. who inspired JP to be in the capital, in the business of a capitalist venture. Hmm. But JP was, had his deformation. He was, not a, he was not confident. But the father built that confidence in him and he had no choice but to follow the same route of what his father laid before him. Now, it turns out JP Morgan's grandfather was in the steel industry. Hmm. So when JP ended up owning two thirds of American railways, it made sense. Bishop, it goes back to if you do not understand. No, I wanted to build on that. Your okay. ancestral. You, are, you don't understand yourself. If you don't uh, understand. Okay, let me become a New Testament preacher. A New Testament preacher. Please, sir. Uh, a, a man is blind. Yeah. And then he hears that Yeshua is passing by. Okay. And he says, Jesus. Yeah. Son of David. Okay. Have mercy on me. No, put a put a comma there. All right. Now, why would Bartimaeus mention the grandfather? 
of Jesus okay. is David. You need to go back to the book in the Old Testament. I got you. And find Saul had a son called Jonathan. Yes. Jonathan had a son called Mephibosheth. Yes, sir. During the raid, the aunt took Mephibosheth to her back when she was running away and the baby fell from behind the, the aunt and broke his legs. Okay. They went to a place called Lodiba. Yeah. And when David remembered his covenant with Jonathan, when he got into power, mm. and he made an announcement, is there anyone in the house of Saul yep. whom I can show mercy to? Mm. There's no one left. And the answer came back, except Mephibosheth. Hey. And he says, go call him. Hey. The rest of the story is history. Hey. Mephibosheth spent all his years eating at the table of David. Ma, ma, ma. Go back to New Testament. Ma. Bartimaeus, when he's addressing Yeshua, okay. he doesn't address him as Yeshua. Hey. But he parallels his blindness to Mephibosheth's condition. Okay. His unworthiness to Mephibosheth's unworthiness. Come on. And he says, if David, your grandfather, right. was able to show mercy hey. to the grandson of his own enemy hey. and bring the grandson to come and have supper with him the Talk rest to of me, his days. Mabonga. Now me also, Bartimius. Yeah. I don't deserve. But if you can look into your genes. Yes, sir. Look into your ancestry and see what your ancestors did for other children in the past who did not deserve. Hey. Can you not all show mercy to me? Hey. To which the Messiah says, please bring him forward. 011-883-3343. Give me a call right now. I got the better minds in the room all the way from LA to Johannesburg. I'm taking your calls. 011-883-3343. Is it the reason why missionaries strategically destroyed the Zulu? When you look, at, nothing offends before me. I like, before I give Gogo. Nothing offends me, Gogo, eh? and Bishop. Then not finding a true portrait of King Shaka Zulu. One of the f one of the biggest robbery, highest crime committed under the sun was the white man destroying a true identity of King Shaka. But they cannot destroy his accomplishments, how he humiliated the Boers, how he humiliated the English. But what they can destroy how he looked like. Before you give to Gogo, yeah. I wanted to conclude on this one. Yeah. So when you don't know your history, yes, as sir. Bishop was saying, yeah, you are forfeiting a library of your own DNA. Yay! Hey, hey, you are. You gotta repeat that. When you, you don't, don't know, know your, your history, history, you are destroying a library of, of your, your own DNA. Mm. Your DNA contains your stature. Yeah. It contains your complexion. Yeah. It contains your diseases. Hey. It contains your blood groups. Hey. It contains your anger. It contains your fears. It contains your accomplishments. It contains your talents. It contains your achievements, your potential. Ladies and gentlemen. They are all cued in your DNA. Ladies if you and don't gentlemen. know what your fathers have accomplished, Yay. you may never know how much capacity is, is it, locked up inside you. Is that the reason why when we fill up these insurance forms, Gogo, they ask you, is there arthritis in your Do family? Do you have a history? Is there cancer in your family? <laughs> is there uh, psycho tendencies I now in your believe family? in Jesus. I now believe in Jesus. You will still have diabetes if you don't know your father had diabetes. <laughs> It will help you let, to let eat me, properly. Let me let me piggyback on Mapanga and, and my dear sister on this. Yes. Uh, if you remember, and I'm going to be very, very laconic with this. If you remember in Second Chronicles chapter 20, where uh, Jehoshaphat and Israel they were fighting against the, uh, I think it was Ammon and the Ammonites, of course, and right. beside them, of course, there were some others from Syria and all of that on the other side of Syria. They were fighting. Right. And uh, it came to the point where they needed a word from the Lord. Mm. And uh, then, of course, in about verse 14. In the middle after the prayer, it said, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And of course, he said, Hearken ye all Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat, mm. be not afraid nor dismayed for reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. To the and Lord. I had a difficulty trying to figure out why is this man giving us the ancestors Levitical uh, order. I, I need to come in. <laughs> Why is he telling me all about Jehoshaphat? Well, he is about to tell them 
that they are going to go forward in, in military strategy and the military strategy is going to be praise. Okay. They're going to praise, lead with praise singers. Well, the question now becomes in a military situation where you tell me I got to lead with praise singers, then I need to know what your background and your ancestral background is. So I was saying, why is he giving me all these details? Well, he went all the way to Levite, the sons of Asaph. Well, hey. who are they? Asaph is the one who put the music to David's words. Wow. So he was the one who was a praise leader. Come so on. now it is authenticated Grimson. that I can take it from wow. an individual who has an ancestry in praise leading to lead this army with praise. My point is this. Nobody can speak of the gods of their ancestors or the spirit of their ancestors if they have no relationship with their ancestors. Woo! Thank Checkmate! You. Drop the mic. Checkmate! Lord help us, Doc, Doctor Major. I, I wanted to to unpack this this uh, from the discussions. Yes, there's an issue of history. Yeah, uh, and there's a, the Bible concept. Okay, which goes together with the Christianity concept, and yes. then there's uh, the ancestors, ancestors, ancestors. Right, and then now when I talk about history, right, as as Africans, mm. as human beings, mm. as a human race, yes. Understanding your history is very critical. Yes. When I would base it specifically with with what has happened with us, mm -hmm. when I say us, most of us in the, it say Afri when you talk about African spirituality in the African continent. Okay. It got lost somewhere, and one of the reasons why it got lost was that, let alone the colonialism, we it, most of the things that were recorded. Some of it were recorded in a way that we can never be able to retrieve and be able to read. I got you. Now, I'm saying that com that comparison with the Bible. Okay. The Bible was somehow, I would say, opportunity to have been recorded by certain people and they recorded the way they're best suitable how. Yes. But in our state of understanding our culture, our, our history, our origins, yes. the recordings were never really from uh, able to be from one generation to the other. Got you. Hence now when this, the, the Bible concept, the Christianity concept came yeah. into picture, it was now, it also it was forced to us in the States when we have to go back. Now I'll just page another page whereby we as, as healers, or indigenous healers, we're classified as witches and there was even a witchcraft act before 1994. Mm. So that now that we, because now we were forced to now to be classifying ourselves as witches mm. and over and above have the stigma to attach that to That is you practicing now, witchcraft. Yes. Yeah. Now, also coming to the fact that now when talking of the history, the history helps to, to create the, the lifestyle of a person. It helps to mold a person. It helps to mold the nation. Right. Looking at how the history was before of uh, the economical um, the economical state of, of beings and the, the the, the marriages yeah. of, 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 of people and all that. Okay. Now, and now we look at how the, the Christianity has also now like packaged that okay. to say this is how, to, how we believe that things should be. Right. Now, on the other hand, I had looked and listened most of the time the Western or the other non-black races. Mm -hmm. they, they normally don't refer to ancestors. They would say it's spirit guides. Then it sounds fancy. It sounds okay. Whereas in our side, then when we say ancestors, then everyone puts <coughs> up this big like stigma attached to it to say, oh, so if it's ancestors, it's a taboo. You're worshiping, right. worshiping devil. I, I want to throw even, a curveball. I want to throw a curveball to Google. Okay. On its own, okay. it's also a bit of a concern. While you're throwing a curveball, I've got a caller from Kruger's Dobby reconnecting. Go ahead. The curveball is, why must they not call you witches? Because there's two things here. Mm. I don't have a problem with healing. Yes. We are using spirituality to deal with physical or spiritual ailments on a person. Right. But when a person comes to you and they are seeking for help to manipulate situations yeah. in other people's lives yes against yes. their will yes no the person that you want to work yeah. on yeah has not agreed yeah it's like okay a husband wants to leave a wife okay okay right. a simple example yes and the wife feels he cannot go 
And I'm gonna go see. To and go. then they come to Gogo, but yes. my husband wants to go. Yeah. Then Gogo makes a concoction for this person. Yeah. This person cooks the concoction. The person drinks the concoction. <laughs> he ends up as a zombie in the house. Mm. Now, why will the government not call you a witch? Because in that context, I want us to put it's a like clear it's, line. Yeah. We are struggling with with Christian Christianity right. here. Yeah. Pastors who say they are Christians, but in the midst of them being ministers of the gospel, yeah. they are not truthful to the gospel. Right. As Elder Noel Jones said the other day. Yeah. But they are intent is actually not for the gospel. Okay. In, in the same wavelength, also in the midst of the indigenous healing, mm -hmm. you also find that there's that big curtain between pure healing. Someone mm. comes and says, it's me, Gogo, who is not feeling well. Yeah. Can you deal with me? Mm. And you can help that person as an individual. Okay. But immediately as an indigenous healer, you, are, you tap into my fears and my anger and everything else and you become an assistant yeah. to manipulate someone else. What stops the community from calling you a witch? I need, to, I need you guys to understand this. Okay. The, the reason they would end up calling us witches mm. is because... Um, I'm not. Uh, it's because the non-black people who were then were the ones that were behind colonizing our our culture. Mm didn't understand the secrets and the mystery behind the healing or the act of spirituality mm -hmm. of the Africans. Okay. Mm. So what best way to classify it mm. is which? Got you. Jesus made, said something that uh, sparked a, a, a debate between Karl Barth and uh, Schallemacher. Uh, one was dead at the time. Karl Barth was living and I think... Uh, uh, Shalomaka was dead, and I don't think I'm pronouncing his name properly. Okay. I miss it all the time. Shambhala. But Jesus said to the woman uh, with the issue of blood, thy, thou faith, thy faith hath made thee whole. And from one point of view, the ar argument became that, and one of my great scholars, one of my great sons in the gospel, Michael Moss in Miami, he argued that faith was more subjective. And uh, arguing on my argument on the other side is that faith is significant in who you have faith in. Because we have had faith in a lot of folk who didn't deserve our faith and our trust and they broke our hearts. Okay. I want to say this and I think it's very significant when you deal with the issue of Africa and colonization. I think it's very important to understand this. That when the dominant culture comes into Africa, they come in with their own idiosyncratic concepts of how God and healing operates through his spirit. Mm. The ancestral individual in an African environment is only concerned about what it is they know and their confidence is in how it's being administrated and what it is that they believe because of what it is they've been exposed to. At the end of the day, the confidence that brings the healing is the connection of the subjective to the objective regardless of what that objective is. Okay. If there's confidence in what is being given as a medicine, you can give somebody a medicine, uh, what do they call that medicine? A placebo uh, that has absolutely no strength in it, has no power in it, but the person believes in it to the point where they're healed. And the same sense, when a person believes in the ancestral situation, they get as much from it based on what they believe in it, that oftentimes that healing is the w uh, healing within based on the faith they had in it. Now, when the man comes with his own concepts and he has no idea of people having faith in something that he doesn't have faith in, it doesn't mean it won't work for them. Right. But any time, listen, last week, or when, when the bishop laid this on me last week, that civilization is the human being's ability to become one with nature. That's what civilization is. Anytime you tear up nature, you are a savage. They have called us savages because we did not adhere to the principles that they thought made them civilized. It's what you believe in that's ultimately going to get you a response. Okay, speaking of which now, Doc, you have patients recently who were infected with COVID-19. You put together your concoction through the help of the ancestors, through the help of, you know, uh, the gods, you, you know, through the help of God, excuse me, and you prescribed your concoction to them and they recovered. 
Yes. And not only with COVID-19, you've dealt with various sicknesses and diseases. At the end of the day, your faith has made you whole. It was dependent on the one with the ability to, to believe that they'll be whole. So it seems to me, with the woman in the issue of blood, he to, she could have bumped into Tibo Touch. And by touching the hem of his garment, she would have still been behold because of the, the potency mm -hmm. of her faith. Mm -hmm. How does that relate with your, I almost said customers, I'm such a businessman, with your patience, <laughs> with your patience, how does that relate? Because they come to you believing that Dr. Majola has solutions. And here they are, they've recovered from COVID-19. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much for referring to them as patients, yes. which is very critical it's, yeah. for us to say it's Protocol. patients. Yeah. Uh, it's not just clients, it's, it's patients. Thank you. Now, um, relating to what happens is that the, the, the herbs that we get as from the from the from, I will say from the ancestors, you know, they they're from our people that were before us. Yeah. Different types of herbs and instructions. We need to understand that they were used for various uh, illnesses. Mm -hmm. They were used for various uh, illnesses at the time, and find that one herb can heal about five to six, um, I would say, illnesses or diseases in the body. Okay. Now, with, with what happens when a person comes in, yes, and they they say I've got a headache. You know, and then I'm like, fine, let's look at the root cause of the headache. You right. find that the headache is not only the, 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 the roots of the headache. There's more beyond that. I got you know, you. there's a spiritual aspect that leads to the headache. Okay. There's, uh, there's, there's issues that are, are not aligning with his uh, Im imbalance of energies mm. that results to the headache. Mm. It's not just a straightforward headache. Mm. So now with that being said, after then I have ad an, an unpacked the reason for the, for the headache and say holistically, if I were to say now, these are the reasons to give a full diagnosis, mm. not just a physical aspect of it. Mm. So that's another thing. Thing I would say now, we as indigenous healers, we've got that extra benefit okay. that we do the holistic uh, diagnosis. So you approach it holistically than scientifically. Yes. Okay. You know, and it gives a, it gives a better a better uh, I would say better out, out, out outcome or result. Yeah. Okay. So in this instant, whereby the 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 the, the patient was like they they they're feeling feverish and all they were in main fact I would say they were mentioning all the symptoms of of, of COVID and at the same time say they have been diagnosed or they've been said that they are in that state. Correct. So for me, understanding that this so-called COVID, which I'm going to unpack in later on also, to say what is it at the end of the day. What is know? it? To unpack it now. Let's um, go there. Let's go right yeah. there. Unpack it now. Okay. Understanding that this this is this, it's got two dynamics of it. Okay. There's a spiritual aspect of it. Ah. Okay. And then there's this physical aspect whereby it has been created. It has been invented. Corona is it's, invented. It's, it, has, it has been invented. There's different types of coronas. Okay. We have now what we have now. It's, 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 the, it's COVID-19. Yeah. And it's the, it's the one that affects your, your, your chest and your gastro. The ones that before they were affecting uh, will be your, there were uh, others that are called red coro, 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 coronas. The other one is uh, the, it's called um, the IBV corona. There's various names of it. I would okay. just have to just remind the names of it. But what I want to understand, when I want to unpack is that Corona is is something that was done or created in a way that it was created to for for a certain purpose that I wouldn't would like to go into in deep into because it's more on the political side. I'm with you. You know. So, but from the spiritual aspect, understanding that it, the impact of it, whereby the the forefathers or the our our spiritual guides, they then had to allow it to happen because remembering that being a, a spiritual connected person, you know, the, our our spirit guides can have more power than anything, and okay. they do have the power right now. What there has happened is that they had allowed this to happen mm -hmm. now why did they allow that because they wanted to remind us us as a nation who is the one that is behind everything it's them in a household because at the end of the day the cures or they say the the immune boosters or the remedies or recommended remedies are the herbs so it's not the western things so, that we can so, say we so, rely so, on so in a nutshell god allowed this pandemic to happen because it, it's here we're living with it the same way god allowed 9 11 mm. the same way god allowed apartheid to happen so now that we're dealing with this you source or solicit 
your ability to put this concoction together not from some academic background no. or some th- didn't uh, go to school for seven school. years for it no my question to you did the ancestors give you the right biochemistry being or, or the right knowledge to put these t- together where do you solicit your information from yes my ancestors my guides my whatever that you call it but my ancestors gave me the yeah. direction Okay, I want to go to Washington, D.C. I have Mahomu calling us from the U.S. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mahomu. Welcome to, welcome to South Africa. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you, Taj. I'm so inspired by the conversations. I always tune in to listen to you and the two bishops. Very inspirational. Good to see uh, the sister they joining us today. My comment today really uh, is about, I, I want to know how come we are not you know, putting our medicinal uh, resources or solutions, like the lady was talking about, having a cure for COVID. Uh, ancestors have been out there for years and years and years before pharma was um, in the industry, before pharmaceutical came through, and we were able to cure our own sicknesses. Why are we not, you know, mainstreaming this? I mean, we, we have been surviving without um, the Western side of things. Why are we not putting this into, you know, into Beautiful. the mainstream and doing Beautiful. things ourselves? I like that question. Why don't we go, why don't we go mainstream? Why don't we go mainstream with the solutions, Doc? Okay, Over to you. One answer. Yeah. One answer. Yeah. That's where you come in. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, would say sound controversial or whatever the case yes. may be. Okay. Um, in the early, it's, I would say early phase of this COVID when it came. Right. Uh, in one of the so several interviews that one has been into and uh, with other traditional healers. Okay. The mentioning of the umhlonyane or lengana or atemiza yeah. has been there from day one. Got you. As, as, as a recommendation of what can we use. Since at that time, if you remember, this COVID was, came up as, as flu and flu and now is more airborne and all that. Correct. Issues of uh, um, uh, the matters of, of saying, let's, recommendation of saying, let's use umhlonyane, let's use impepo, let's use to sanitize the air, yeah. let's use this. It was been said long then, but it was never taken into, into consideration. Consideration. Mm-hmm. Now, I would just reflect back to the history okay. that as indigenous healers, you know, we were never really been given the p- a proper platform to say we are recognized in terms of whatever that we recommend. And I would say looking at the history, AIDS pandemic, it, there was a time whereby there was AIDS pandemic. Right. Healers, different healers came and say, this is the cure. And they say, no, no, we cannot declare that we've got a cure to understand. So it goes back to the system, how the system has been affecting us as indigenous healers that we we're not given that the leverage to say when we have found the cures that have been given by the, our forefathers, we can declare. Um, now, coming now to such a to to if I may add, if now, I may, if I may okay. interject, okay. if I may interject, because of time, because of time. Yes, okay. go ahead, Bishop. Yes, yeah. If I may interject, if yes. we're dealing with issues, you see, one of the things that we do all the time is that we do not take our substances and put it in a place where it can be proven. This is the significant aspect of what you put out in this world. If I have something that is a home remedy or something that is ancestrally motivated, and again, when you start dealing with spiritual things, none of us can declare what we know. Anytime you start dealing with things in the spirit, it's always about what you believe. Yes. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe because the my- certainty is a myth. You believe something, it comes to pass, it's revelatory, it's proven. Jesus always said, go show yourself to the priest. After you have been healed, go show yourself. It's something that is evident in a scientific conclusion. Right. What I'm saying is, whatever it is that we believe is healing and has healing virtues, let's put it to science and let's put it to the test. And, and, and verify it. And, and let's be open for criticism. I, I, just on that one. Yes, I, I just, I, I, what the Another thing is that, we, we, why is it that we as Africans, yeah. 
you know, and as indigenous knowledge system people, yeah. we have to prove ourselves every time for what is there, what has already been there, been used thousand times, many times. Okay. You know, it brings out another aspect to say that is why even when the Madagascar said that, hey, there's this cure. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, boom, everyone now, even our own, own our government and everyone, it's like, oh, yes, this is the, we can use this, we can use this. Right. Whereas it has been there for many years and it has never been given the platform to say, yes, let's, let's accept it. I want, I want to punch, I want to now, punch a hole also, there. I know you want to punch a hole. It's but been said that we have to go and test it. Yeah. Now, I take wanna, it to labs. That do really. we, I think I think I hear you, but it's important to legislate. To I want to punch a hole but, there. But, but, but just, just the, can we go quickly to Kahiso right here in my backyard? I have to let Nomsa on the line. Good evening, Nomsa. Hi, welcome to the new normal. Um, so I want to protect. How are you? Uh, I'm so blessed, darling. Go straight to it. I uh, for Okay. <laughs> You know, can we ever overdose on Sonyan? Very good question. Can we overdose? This is this is that's a that's a very beautiful part. And back to what Bishop was saying. Um with Western medication there's usage and guidance on how. With with ours, can you overdose? On Sonyana because I don't think you got those nutritional facts and warnings and um, those important facts on how to, you know, conduct or take. So maybe help me with answering that question. Okay, I'll and answer. Could I ask? Could I? Could I? Could I put in a, forward another question? Yes, Bishop. Do we do we have enough black labs in Africa or anywhere in the world that we could test? the significance of what we're presenting, whether covertly, sub-covertly, clandestine, or openly, do we have enough black labs and black scientists who could test what it is that we're putting out as a remedy for the problem? Mm, and very, then somebody would important. be a billionaire. We, we'd all be rotten rich. Doc, Doc, do we have enough resources? Yeah, I wanted to, to say on, the, on that one on the on the enough resource of the to labs test. Yes. to test. Yes, that is still a, t a challenge for us because I wanted to say if we're saying if we were saying that we have to regulate. My yes. question was going to be how do I allow to be regulated by the same person that doesn't allow me to use the herb that's going to heal me? Okay, I wanted to punch something. Our greatest weakness, yes, which also has to do with the challenge that we have. Okay, our weakness are the educated people right our educated community right now yes. those are the targets that that, that that is our weakest link i got you because i cannot imagine that we have doctors in africa yes pharmacists pharmacologists yes we have universities of Wits and cape town and etc who right. are running pharmacological departments okay and for the life of me all these institutions put together yes they will never take a glance at indigenous medicines no mm. Go and pick up the active ingredients. Yeah. Bring them to the lab. To date, as we are talking right now, okay. University of Vizzi has not picked up Mshonyana to put it under the microscope. Mm. And as a country and a government, mm. uh -huh. begin to tell us what is the value of Mshonyana so that by the time World, Gov World Health Organization is saying we have a solution, they can say, but if you can also add a little bit of our herb here, yeah. this can enhance X. So we, we actually have uh, I think, I think, I think I think, Bishop, you can help us with that one because it's got to do with the debilitation of the mental disposition of Africans. Mm. We do not take ourselves Oops. so serious and valuable mm. to an extent that even when we are on the pilot side, Seat, we still want to sit in economy. Listen, you have enough people who are educated right. who still have that ancestral connection concept. They have not been eliminated. Right. The whole point is how do we and under what banner do we gather the people who we know have the knowledge to put the test scientifically to the things that we have? 
And maybe Dr. Mapongo is right. Your reach is not only in the religious, your reach is not only in the business, but it's also in media, it's also in church. So maybe you're the person to say, let's pull the individual over here who has a scientific background, the MIT degree, the Harvard degree, and put up with the person who is operating in the ancestral medicine. Right. And let's see whether or not we can come to some kind hey, of harmony. Come on. Just, Somebody, um, I, I, I want, can I acknowledge one of the comments that just came through, Bishop? I love this, and I want, I want to quote this, uh, which is very important, because not long ago, we buried a president across the border who spent most of his uh, time in his deathbed in Singapore, burning Zimbabwean uh, government money when he could have just flew across the border or, you know, to get the solution for whatever his problem, but obviously age caught up with him. And I'm referring to... Um, um, may, his soul rest may his soul rest in peace. Why we brag about Chinese medicine so much? Because the Chinese did it well. You know why they're doing Asian so medication, it's all, it always relates to herbs Chibos, and traditional ways. Here's a secret. Yeah. The ability to take indigenous medicines yeah. and just package them. Tell us what's in their tea quickly. This uh, is some shonyana plus some mix. garlic and gingers. She yeah, made it herself. It's, it's a mix of Dr. Orange. Majola's tea. She's, Bishop, listen to the ingredients. Do, uh, Bishop, what's in the tea? It's not... It's it's mixed with Yes, yeah, put some garlic, some ginger, some shonyana, everything that is to do with bronchitis. And <laughs> this conco it's it's what your grandmama used to do in Mississippi, downtown Alabama. Yes, but, doc. But, um, to answer the question of the overdose. Okay. Remember, she asked about the overdose. Yes. Yes. I yes. would need. Can you please just? I, I just need if if there's anyone. So this is one of your patients. <clears throat> yes. All right. We're gonna call one of your patients to give a testimony on the experience and give it uh, the, exp the explanation over the question of overdose. But before then, my favorite yes, city uh, in the world, favorite. Joe I'm City, Tabang. Hi. Hi, how are you? And I'm favored. Talk to us. What's your question? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an uh, input and a comment. I would like by starting since you were touched basis of seeing that our fellow people are being ignorant. Uh, I would like to correct you on that point and remind you that um, it's not that because they, they like being ignorant and stuff, but then the 15. Had, had chosen their faith and the system had pro pro programmed our fellow black people to be what they are today. Okay, I hear that. That's yeah. a valid point. Um, our people are not inherently ignorant. It's strategic for them to fail. Software. They, so, so, Bishop, um, one of the arguments, a gentleman, Tabang from Joburg, says, we could have long regulated the space. We could have long mainstreamed these uh, herbal solutions that our doctors have been gifted to put together. It's just that those who are profiting in the pharmaceutical value chain will always strategically manage, this. manage the failure of these African solutions from not reaching mainstream, which is, which which is a very... Need, can I just come in? Sorry. Yes. We need to remember that... The, the the western or the, the it's drugs they don't treat the the, the they treat the symptoms mm. highlight they don't t deal with the root cause of the illness oh we deal with the illness i got you that's and where we differ i'm telling you because right now before the show i was a bit weak feeling tired i had a long day and you know we started burning uh this amazing plant called mpepo and i just got rejuvenated now we've been taught especially growing in church, that we don't burn such things. When you burn such things, you're calling on wrong spirits. But why does it bring life to me? Why does it give me that vivaciousness, that zeal to get on air, talk to you, and, and have this conversation? It's because I can grow it in my backyard. I don't have to go and get it over the counter. And I think that these pharmaceutical mafias have a strong relationship with the very same missionaries. Mm. Tibos, yeah. what, what we are dealing with, Tibos, you take a, a young child and you indoctrinate them for the longest part of their lives. Right. And every time they see a black person, they see black solutions, mm. they are always on the slave side. They are always yeah. on the darker side. Okay. They are always on the negligible side. Okay. You, all your history celebrates black failures mm. and white successes. Thank you. And as I said in one of the shows prior, education has become a passport to escape from Africanism mm. into the panacea of Eurocentric, you know, affluence. Mm. So there's no way an educated person actually can start drinking Macheu 
Yes. Eating Mukhodu yes. <laughs> with his bare hands the way he did. Because now he knows there's bacteria. Yes. There is what, what. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, yeah. And, and when, yeah. But it, this conversation is now happening at that level. Maybe, where, maybe, <laughs> maybe what needs to happen, Bishop, is let me put together a network of credible doctors. You put a network of credible billionaires and let's put a, let's put a, let's put a lab and test. We might not even need billions. We probably need $5 million. We probably need $10 million. And, you know, I, I believe Bishop is going to take that leap of faith to say, hey, if you market what it is that is working in an ancestral circumstances and situation, if you market it, yes, and if you run around here in a COVID-19 uh -huh. environment right. and all right. Africans and all South Africans That's correct. who are taking the mm -hmm. home medicine or the ancestral medicine or taking what you're taking and everybody's healthy yes. and everybody else who isn't is sick, I guarantee you that'll get the attention of the powers that be Let's do it, in Bishop. a hurry. Let's do it. Let's because do it, they'll Jones. they'll try to monetize it. Let's do it. And if you know what it's worth, you will get a share of whatever is monetized hey, and make praise yourself Lord. rich. I love it. We got to start positioning ourselves as African people. Mimoya, all the way from New York City. Good evening to you, Mimoya. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Greetings, greetings. I really appreciate this conversation. It's been so exciting listening to y'all talk. Thank you, thank you. And your point? I had, sure. I had a question about, um, as you all were talking about making sure that the technologies of African spirituality are empirical, right? That they can be proven that it should go to science, our healing traditions. What do you think about once that happens, once the technologies are turned over to science, who makes money off of that? And what do you feel about the kind of the capitalization on packaged traditional medicine, even as it's coming from the East, how you plan or, or what's the conversation when it comes to the capitalization of African spirituality tradition mm, mm, and mm, who will be the people important. who capitalize once it is brought to mainstream culture and turned over to science? Beautiful question, Mimoy, all the way from New York. The capitalization is going to be the biggest turning point. I think the, the answer is right there, or not you're saying, who will benefit? Right. If we understand how the European system works, the capitalist system works, mm -hmm. the money is not in the product. Mm. The money is in the IP. I was about the intellectual to say property. I was mm. about to now, say that. Gogo here has IP. Right. The, what, what she has put in here, she's the only one who knows what is in here. Okay. And if that information can be protected in her, we beneficiate and create a value chain from that because th that is this is the money, right? In terms of the 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 IP, the IP itself, right? So we needed to find <coughs> what the pharmaceutical companies have been doing right now by banning mshonyana. They are not banning it; <coughs> they are taking it no. to the laboratories, right? Yeah. And finding the active ingredients in the mshonyana, mm -hmm. then they will come up with the plastic. They come up with Except synthetic. Capsules. They come up with exactly. capsules. By the time it's coming from there, it will never be written in Mshonyana. It's it will come up some Kovi. The same way Mar Euro. Moringa. Yes, the look same at Moringa. Thing Moringa. Exactly. The same thing with Moringa. So, so, Mimoya, is your question answered? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll be shipping the solution to you soon. It's going to be coming right here from <laughs> Africa. Look out for it. All right? I definitely will. Thank you. Thank you for calling. And, 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 and it's very important. Thank you. Bishop, I think it's time we take this conversation into uh, uh, crafting a proper package where we put a little bit of money into it and... and, 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 and sample it out. Put a sample mm -hmm. and backed by science backed by the right dosage and you know uh, and mainstream it but, but I, I, wanted to, I, wanted to, I wanted to help Gogo also on something very critical yeah what makes indigenous medicines just on the issue of dosages mm. what makes indigenous medicines slightly more advantageous yeah is because they're coming from the ground and they are natural yeah as a result mm. the body is able to digest them and get them out of the system. So you can overdose on them. As of synthetic medicines yeah. that are plastic, mm -hmm. which the liver and the kidneys cannot even break down the high carbon concentrations that are put into, and high carbon mm. chemicals that are put into the, they work to actually to wear down and stress the human body parts. Hey. So in as much as you can drink, you can drink a cup of mshonyana, but don't tell me you can drink a cup of tablets. Because you're able to I'm compress higher concentrations in, in, in smaller capsules. Yes. That makes it more dangerous. Yes. Whereas in African medicines, 
organs is in the bigger dilution. I got so you. that even the, the, the urinary system, the liver system can yes. process them without leaving much of trace wrapping elements. Up, wrapping up, Bishop Jones, give us the mandate. Mm. What's the word, Bishop? What's the word? Anything that is significant can be authenticated. Anything that is genuine, anything that is real can be authenticated and that's what we should do. We can do it two ways. One, try to take it to mainstream directly by soliciting those who are scientifically capable and put it through lab tests or using it within the confines of our own environment, our own people, and putting it to the test from the point of view that it has proven itself and it has shown itself. We market it, then we market the results, and if they want it, they take it. If they don't want it, we will continue to be healthy by it. Praise the we Lord. We do have our own ways of testing our own medicine. Okay. I'm just outlining that. Now it just you. came into my head that yes, our we forefathers, our own we have our own ways. Right. It's just that maybe the recording of it, of how it was done, we find that it to be shared from one family or that particular it would say race or tribe. Right. I would say a tribe specifically. Right. It would be shared then amongst that. But we do have, that's why you find that we have been using them. The, the Umplonian is more than a thousand years. Before. I hear you. And I want to go to Kempton Park as our last call. Stan, good evening and thank you for being our last call on this groundbreaking conversation. How are you doing? Great. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. And your point? All right, great. Uh, look, um, I just wanted to recommend um, the, the hab. Um, it, it really did wonders with me. Uh, I only started having it on day eight of being um, on, on my COVID-19 isolation. And I must say that from there about, uh, I remember calling a friend after I just started using Montreal to say, look, I just feel brand new. Uh, it's like uh, I feel alive. My, I just started feeling myself again. The chest was opening up. And Pardon me, Stan. I got to make this introduction right. Right. Stan is our brother who's sharing his testimony after consulting Dr. Majola. And, and, and as one of your patients, he's now sharing his experience. You were, you did test positive, am I right? Yeah, I was, I did a positive COVID-19, yeah. And, 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 and how did you find out that there's a doctor called Dr. Majola to go and probably give some form of credence and say hey yeah that was a colleague um who is who is, who is also um, a patient of, of 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 the doctor yeah so she's the one who introduced me to her and then she's the one who also brought the the, the hands to me how many days how isolation. many days how many days were you um since you tested positive did you start consulting doc on day on day, day eight on day eight so day give, number eight yeah. so give me the evolution so basically what happened from day number one to seven, I think it's basically uh, we are just going through the emotions, the fear effects are kicking in and all that. Um, and I think I was, I was really having it hard. The breathing was was terrible. My, my chest was tight. Uh, the headaches were just a daily thing and I was feeling weak. So wow. a friend just came and said, yeah, exactly. So the friend is the one who introduced me to, to, to the doctor and said, look, uh, she can assist you. Um, here's the hand. Came in a beautiful package. It was nothing like I expected from traditional medicine. Mean, uh, um, so because you always you always associate uh, traditional medicine with uh, a certain stereotypes that we've gone unfortunately to be taught and I must say that the package was well labeled clean and it was just everything I wanted at the moment so when I started taking it there was a tremendous change eh? uh, it was like I just had a, boot, uh, a, a reboot my chest opened up I was up and down going up and down the stairs and this was the thing that I could not do it was like a magic uh, wing um, I really I really really appreciate it yeah, I really would appreciate that. Mm. So if I put you to test and say in six months from now there's gonna be a network of African pharmaceutical solutions, would you stand as an ambassador to be behind one hundred percent. I will proudly and loudly um, stand and, and and be an ambassador. I mean, I owe a lot, a lot to the help. Um, I owe a lot to our African systems. They really helped me a lot. So I, I'm really grateful for that. Fantastic. Yeah. I think we are to uh, something but, uh, here, Bishop. To add to that, I just saw a note flash across the screen. If this works, then there is no news outlet. There's no news outlet, CNN, CBS, NBC. There is no group that wouldn't take this story. Mm. The thing is, prove it works. Heal some people. Get some people that Making were noise. seriously sick. 
put them on this stuff, get them out of the hospital or out of their rooms, get them on their feet, let them testify to news outlets. They'll take the story. It'll be phenomenal. Uh, Bishop, I've got news for you. We ain't making no gin, no wine. We are going into pharmaceutical business. <laughs> <laughs> we done. We done. We done. We 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 putting operation has been put in suspense, ladies and gentlemen. We channeling the energy to package the touch Warwick, the touch reserve, the forty eight gin. We're gonna package this properly. And if anybody has experience in putting opium products on the market and getting them distributed correctly. You know I'm speaking to the mirror right now. Mm -hmm. And my number one partner in crime is all the way in LA. <laughs> so Bishop, the rent is 17.5 to one dollar. <laughs> so I know it's a drop in the ocean for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to spend dollars uh, in South can Africa. I just add something? Yes, yes, I'm okay. closing. The, I just want to add something, that one important aspect. Yeah. This... Corona thing, whatever. Yeah. It's been ma mentioned to be airborne. Right. Now, we mentioned earlier on that we had to sanitize the air using mbepo, which yes. is a traditional indigenous herb. Now, I, want to, I, I would like people to understand that when you're just burning mbepo, it's not only just burning in pop, you're actually sanitizing the air. Mm. As much as we have to put our masks, mm. now when you burn that, it's also a benefit. And mbepo, not only for burning, you use, can also use Imbepo to make Mbepo tea. You make it, you also drink ah. it. So it's, it's, a, it's a holistic herb hey. on its own. So, so if we were to burn it all over Santon, oh, we wouldn't me. need masks? Actually, we need to package Imbepo for government offices. Because right now they're, they're using alcohol, high alcohol concentrates, which are burning people's hands and etc. When we have a natural herb, hey. we can actually use like Indians do in their shops. Hey. Why not burn a natural herb? So in closing, Bishop, in closing, boss, Yes, sir. I'll, I'll like you to just instill that sense of direction, not just to the three of us in studio, but to those aspiring Africans that are listening who will take this leap of faith and say, I want to man, I want to see the manifestation of this property out on the market. What do you what do you what, what, what do you have to say for that? I'd like you to actually bless that step, that leap of faith we're about to make. Uh, Father, I, I come in the name of Jesus and I say, Lord, open us up to understanding that we are valuable. Yes. What we have is valuable. Yes. The knowledge we have received over the years from our ancestors and from all who have gone before us yes. is valuable. Help us to take everything that's valuable and put it in the context of helping others in the mm. world. And I pray that you give us the boldness, give us the direction and help us to network with each other mm. to the point where we can bring whatever we have to pass. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Love you, Bishop. Love you. I gotta run. <laughs> <laughs>